to the NFL Draft we go. Logan, so you're out in California. Uh, your your agent um, has, has obviously got a bunch of players in this draft, and you know, your guy's out at Cal Strength. Uh, who, did you train at Cal Strength back in the day? They've not. been doing that that long? No, Cal Strength wasn't a thing. I actually okay. trained at uh, Velocity Sports Performance, which is no longer a thing. But uh, Cal Strength is like, this place is fantastic. Like, if you're a kid looking to get dry, like do combine prep, they have a beautiful kind of weight room facility. They have this relationship with this spa gym here where like we did hot yoga last night. They have a Pilates. You know, it's how's, just like, how's the body feeling today after hot I yoga? I actually feel pretty good. You know, like it was um, like my shoulders are sore. Like because you're holding your hands above your head so much, you know, yeah. and I'm just yeah, yeah, not. Yeah. Not not ready for that, um, but you know I'm, I'm I was pleasantly surprised myself to two my own horn. But then they've got they've got meals catered by like a five star restaurant out here. Like I was just like this is if you want like to get ready, combine prep. Yeah, I want to I want to be doing this. Like they've got <laughs> you stay in this beautiful hotel. Like it's it's such a different thing than what I, when I was doing. Where I was like driving two hours to go to Velocity Sports Performance when I was out there. But anyway, different yeah. different deal. But yeah, so um, you're out there working with some of the tight ends uh, that that your guys have. Yeah, so obviously, like, there's different phases to the offseason program. I, Dave Spitz is the head coach out here in terms of getting them ready physically for combine. So we're doing – he's doing 40 prep, doing 5 10 5, getting ready for the bench press. Uh, but a couple guys are going to the Senior Bowl, for example. Jared Wiley, the tight end from TCU, is kind of the, the biggest name of that group. And um, and it's my job to kind of say, like, hey, here are some things from a blocking standpoint to think about. Here are some things from an angle standpoint, route running, more um, position-specific work. And then the other thing I do a lot of with them here is just, like, whiteboard stuff. And I think when you – it's so surprising these guys have been in college for – there's a guy here, for example, who's been in college for seven years. You know, he's 25 years old, and he's an offensive lineman from Wake Forest, actually from the D.C. area. But, um, you know, like, just – what how they've been taught football over that span you know because college offenses are so different so kind of laying a foundation for them from like hey these are the types of questions you're going to get in the interview process these are some things you should probably know as foundational like nfl things you should see and um just kind of increase their football knowledge and then just help them kind of give the best interview they possibly can you know so like last night we're on the whiteboard we do a little bit of field work first then we're on the whiteboard and it's really just about kind of that mental process and then um you know i was not the best physical athlete of all time you know i'm not julio jones and i'm well aware of that my career is what it is i'm very proud of it but i also talk a lot about professionalism and just how to kind of make sure you're around longer than the other guy in, in the room with you you know and so that's something else i talk about and it's really just kind of getting them getting them all prepped for kind of the biggest job interview of their life so yeah, for sure. That's very cool and uh, excited to, to maybe talk a little bit more um, later in the week or next week about how it all went on the back end of it. But um, you are getting to, a chance to work with some of the top tight ends, top folks that are going to the Senior Bowl, and you've yeah. been grinding the tape. And yeah. this is a good time or as good of a time as any to announce that on Thursday's pod, Jim Nagy, the Senior Director of the Senior Bowl, will be with us. So we're very excited about that. Jim is the man. Um, he's the one who organizes everything. He knows all the prospects. He knows so much, so many front office personnel, coaches. Like we'll be able to ask him not only about what he's doing um, down there in, in Mobile, but about Adam Peters and about some of the coaches that he is, uh, or that he is familiar with that the Commanders are looking sure. at. So we'll be able to talk about everything with Jim uh, on Thursday. So excited for that. Um, but as you start to to do your prep, because you will also be uh, in Mobile next week yeah. for the Senior Bowl. Like, who are some of the guys that have started to stand out to you when you talk about not just that second pick and, you know, oh, the, the, like, obviously the top quarterbacks aren't going to be there, but they're, right. the next tier of guys is. So whether anybody sticks out there that may be a trade-down situation or you get into that second, third round, like top yeah. of those rounds, which are going to be really valuable contributors for the commanders, hopefully immediately, but certainly uh, moving forward as they get into this rebuild. Yeah, and I think that's the fun thing about the Senior Bowl specifically is like it's a hundred and I think it's one hundred and thirty five, one hundred and thirty five guys right now on the rosters that have committed, and you know it's like some crazy number, like eighty five percent of those guys will get drafted. So yeah. it's just that Jim Nagy does such a good job of identifying talent, getting those guys in here, and saying these this is the draft pool. So I think between. Um, between that bowl game and then what's the other bowl game? East West the Shrine yeah, game. Shrine the Shrine game, yeah. There that composite like, like that. 200 of those guys will get drafted. So it, they just do such a good job of identifying that talent. And I think the thing that really sticks out to me this year um, about the draft in general is like, obviously, I think Washington will probably go quarterback at number two. And I'm kind of leading Daniels at this point at two. Like, just like when you watch this film, it's just, 
it's tremendous. It's fantastic. But then it's about how do you find playmakers that fit him? And in this in this draft specifically, like the two positions that are just incredibly dense are offensive line, specifically offensive tackle and wide receiver. So when you look at the the list for receivers here, you're like, man, this guy, this guy who's like the 15th wide receiver probably would have been taken ahead of <clears throat> of um of Quentin Johnson last year. Like that's how good wow. he is. And so having that kind of depth and all of those guys here at the senior bowl is going to be so much fun, I think. And that's the thing about it is like, it's not, it's like you you turn on the film, you're like, man, this guy, NFL player, this guy's NFL player. Right. Um, uh, like here, let me just pull my notes up real quick while we're talking. Cause I got a lot of notes coach and I can go through those players for you real <laughs> quick, but it's just like about having those opportunities. And then I think the other thing that I mentioned, the offensive line, like there are going to be some really impressive offensive linemen there that, you know, like, so with that first pick in the second round, the one from Pittsburgh and then the one from uh, the, the commander's pick, it's just like, there's so, there's such a good opportunity. I mean the pick from of, uh, Chicago. Sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. And so I think that's something that just sticks out to me. So like Xavier Leggett is a guy that right now, like he's a guy that had the highest miles per hour last year in college football. He's an explosive play weapon and he's going to be around probably in that kind of early set, late first, early second round, uh, Devontae Walker from North Carolina is this kind of explosive playmaker, um, down the field type guy, right? You got Johnny Wilson from Florida State. You've got these, uh, you got Malachi Corley from Western Michigan, who's like Debo Samuel's twin, like no kidding. And it, so, like these these opportunities for these receivers, like some of those guys, like Xavier Leggett, is a to me, he's a first round guy that might slip because of the volume of first round players into the second round. And I think you, you, you sprint the, you sprint the card in because he's, he's a former special teams guy. He's super physical. He's a big play weapon. He reminds me from a physicality standpoint of like an AJ Brown, Julio Jones, like just a freaky, big physical dude. And I think like the fact that that guy is going to be there in the second round potentially is just something that you're like, this is fantastic for the commanders because we can say, Hey, here's our quarterback of the future. Here's a dynamic legitimate. And it's not like, Oh, we're just taking a receiver because there's a receiver here. We're taking a legitimate playmaker that would have been the best receiver in last year's draft. Probably. Yeah. Um, one thing that Nagy was tweeting about over the weekend that I think is interesting too, and that is great for the commanders is this draft does thin out like the rounds four through seven is not very good in his estimation um, mm -hmm. that you're going to ta be taking guys in round five that are on your undrafted board, um, which sucks. Uh, but right. also the commanders have three picks or sorry, five picking picks in the early. top 100. Yep. And because you pick so early in the round, like you do, like you have a chance to maybe get an extra draftable player where other teams later in the fourth round, later in the fifth round are going to be uh, you know, obviously taking guys uh, that that they would prefer to just sign as undrafted free agents because the talent pool is not there. It also just depends on your positions need or your right. positional needs, though. You know, some of, and basically the reason, uh, according to Nagy and his theory of the case, is that like some of the COVID years and all this stuff is finally yeah. caught up. That guys like they kind of ran out of ran out of depth. Um, with all all these COVID year guys finally Maybe, yeah. you know, having to be in the draft or um, you know finally kind of wearing out these last three years of, of guys taking extra years, two years, three years, whatever it is. Um, and so you have a lot less juniors in this draft and you have and, and the NIL stuff too, right? Guys yeah. are willing to stay um, because they can make money in college. And so ultimately the result is a thinner draft, but the higher you are, the less chance that impacts you um, because your pick might be before the, the the talent runs out. And with that stacked early, you know, five picks in the top 100, that is exceptional for Washington to try to get this talent rich top before the bottom falls out of the draft. I totally agree. And I think it's good. It's rich. At, I th mentioned offensive line, very rich there, very rich at receiver. But then you look at like edge, which the past couple of years has been very dynamic, you know, with kind of, you know, Aiden Hutchinson's the like these kind of really top end premier guys. And there's not really guys like that this year. So I think for the commanders in terms of team building the next couple of weeks, like there are some good players like Latu Latu will be there. He's the guy from uh, UCLA who's the Pac-12 defensive player of the year really dynamic edge rusher with great hands but like after that it gets a little bit of thin and there are guys where you're like oh this guy has something but kind of kind of to your point craig about the depth it's like at that position specifically it's like these are like the four or five guys where like these guys will come in right away and help us and then there's some other developmental athletes that could be that could be features but again you're like you're talking a little bit more developmental there so to your point like if you want a receiver 
like have at it. There's like a million of yeah. them, you know, offensive linemen. It's, it's deeper than it was last year, in my opinion, in terms of starting caliber players, but like linebacker tight end, um, you know, defensive line, you're a little bit like this gets really thin, really quick here. And so for the, for the team, for the commanders, like if you need a linebacker, like I would really be looking at the free agency market. If you need a defensive lineman, let's look at the free agency market because there's not that, that solid consistent depth where you're like, Oh, this is a guy, you know, from a small school that has pass rush upside. I I've watched probably 20 of those guys so far, those defensive linemen. And I'm just like, I haven't seen the same kind of, Oh, like, Oh, the tape's on. I got to keep watching because I'm so excited to see what this guy brings. So I think right. that kind of speaks to – there are some spots where you're like, yeah, man, like you could fall asleep and draft the right receiver in this class. Like that's how good it is. But also like there's some other spots where there's not a lot of talent at the moment. So Good to have $75 million in cap space. Uh, that's, that's a nice little feature for Adam Peters to play with. Um, and also this is why the Senior Bowl is great. Maybe one of those small school guys has a great week and all of a right. sudden you're like, oh, wait. Maybe I wasn't that excited because he was just beating up on on some guy who's going to sure. sell an insurance, to use the classic example, uh, or whatever else uh, D3 football players are going to do after their... Uh, maybe it'll be a finance bro, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, 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 you're doing that, and all of a sudden he does it against an SEC left tackle, and you're like, that's the guy we got to keep an eye on in round yeah. three. Um, that's the beauty of the Senior Bowl, and we'll talk to Jim Nagy about it all coming up on Thursday's show. That will do for today. Um, I did definitely notice that Logan said... Hey, lean in Daniels at this point. We will unpack that on an episode two as well. We'll do a deeper dive into the quarterbacks, probably at some point pre-combine, and then uh, obviously, again, post-combine as well. Um, got all kinds of fun stuff in terms of, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a podcast, Logan, so people are going to listen where they're going to listen, where we are is a little less relevant, but right. within the next month and a half, uh, Logan will be at the Senior Bowl. I will be at the Super Bowl. Um, we will both be at the NFL Combine, so there's a ton of cool stuff that we will have on the pod from all of those places. So now, even though the season's over, as good a time as ever to make sure that you are subscribed and that if you have any Commanders-loving friends, that they are subscribed to. Whether that's on YouTube, where you watch us, at 106.7 The Fan, or your favorite podcast app, we appreciate you listening and subscribing to Take Command. Thanks for watching this clip of Take Command. First, why don't you why don't you like it? It lets other people know that it was good, and then they should watch it too. And Logan, we have a new exclusive home for full episodes. We do. 1067 The Fans YouTube page. Go check it out and please subscribe. Yeah, do do what Logan said. Do He's it. Very, very smart. <laughs>